What's up, baby? I have a very large hammer. <laughs> what you going to do with that? Break some shit up. I'm tough. I can destroy our bathroom cupboards in just seconds. Yeah. We've lived in this house for several years, and uh, all of a sudden, recently, the, the floor started bubbling up. This, um, this stuff you're seeing right here started bubbling up and uh, so we figured oh the shower must be leaking and getting underneath the um, the flooring well as it turns out as you can see here on the floor from the stain patterns it's the toilet yeah we've got some leakage anal leakage so to speak or urinal leakage in a way the toilet is leaking underneath the um, the flooring so we're gonna replace the floor and while we're at it we might as well replace the um the shower walls and uh hell all the walls and maybe even the window that actually you don't even see but it's back there what you got there baby i took it out with one hit wow yeah that's pretty good i'm badass yeah you really should supersize yeah because look at this this is like the world's longest hammer yeah and damn yeah you know the bigger the better Exactly. That's, that's my thought. Hi, and welcome to Rocks. This is uh, the 91st episode of a little television program we've been producing since 1992. We started off in a basement in Bloomington, Indiana, just two drunken idiots ranting at the video camera, J and B. That's uh, J on the left there, my co-host and co-producer. He's the bartender. I'm B, I'm the editor. He mixes the drinks. I mix the video. I, 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 I mix the video. Anyway, a lot has changed since. Ooh, a lot has changed since back then. For one thing, Jay is now in Montana while I'm here in New Orleans. Another thing is that uh, back then we were dirt poor. I used to earn $100 a week. I never thought I'd own my own home. Now, these days, both Jay and I are property owners. So, well, that's what this episode is about. Rocks number 91, property is theft. And we thought we'd start things off as we so often do, with a drink. As you can see, this, this bathroom suffers from serious uh, mold problems in the ceiling. Yes, we've lived with it like this for way too many years. It's kind of almost disgusting. Makes me want to leave. Makes me want to come out here and grab my drink. Um, because, of course, the first thing to do whenever doing home improvements is have a drink. I'm having a bourbon and Coke. We'll see how the mix is. It's a sipping beverage. Where's the drink for the woman who's doing the work? Oh, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll be, um, back with that in a moment here. So I guess, uh, it's, it, it's time to mix a drink here, um, because, uh, you know, if anybody's ever helping you, particularly your wife, in these projects, you better keep them well hydrated, lubricated, pickled in alcohol. The first thing that you'll want for this drink, other than the ice, of course, is an ounce of Grand Marnier. As you'll see, this is a, um, a delicately flavored, delicately triple orange, bottled in France, no less. Since Day is an avid speaker of the French language, I thought that this would be an appropriate um, ingredient in this drink. Wow, that's an actual ounce, isn't it? 
from becoming all too literal. All right, and then we'll want to add also about an ounce of Kahlua. It's a product of Mexico, which is appropriate because Day also speaks Spanish. She's just one funky ass multilingual motherfucker. And so in her honor, we're gonna add, you know, an ounce plus a splash of Kahlua. The final ingredient is some milk. We've got here some 2% uh, reduced fat milk, um, but really anything will do you. And you just wanna add uh, about another ounce of that. So stir it around there and take it porcelain, to porcelain, your home deconstructionist. Porcelain, 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 the porcelain, 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 porcelain goddess, god, goddess, 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 goddess. The porcelain goddess. You like that? It's pretty good. Excellent. So, that was Montana. This is New Orleans. And this next video you're going to see is from Taiwan. Hey, this is Tig Black. Reporting from Rocks from Taiwan. Property is theft. That's what we're discussing today. This is my apartment. This is my wife answering my door to my apartment. Hey, baby, how you doing? I'm busy. Okay. This segment concerns rental properties because that's what we are doing. We're renting this property. Oh, Julie's Okay, this is, this is Julie's office in here. Here's a little space here with a couch and a table and a couch and a refrigerator and a microwave oven and wall decor and fish. Very simple fish. And our other couches and tables and television. Oh, this is our wedding picture. We're looking out over an eighth floor view. Actually, the point is is, is not not the tour. It's the discussion of of uh, property value and the theft and ownership. And Taiwan is like half the size of uh, if you split Indiana down the middle. From top to bottom, the west side would be Taiwan. So for ownership, you can imagine it's very, very expensive. Most everyone rents. And even though I'm married to Julie, it'll be possible for me to ever own property. All the property would always be in her name. Our guest room. Any friends wanting to pay a visit would be sleeping in this bed right here, cool lighting. So yeah, I'll never be able to own property in Taiwan. It'll all only be owned by my wife, Julie. I can't own any businesses of my own. They've got to be owned by Taiwan citizens. So there you go. T Black, reporting for rocks from Taiwan. Property is theft. This house is where we've been living for the last two years. It's not a bad house. It's on this beautiful tree-lined street. It's the coolest house I think that we've ever lived in. But there's just one problem with this house, be it ever so cozy and intimate. It's not ours. It belongs to somebody else. It belongs to our landlord. And we've been living in other people's property for the last 15 years, I figure. What do you think of the joys of renting? Oh, you always have to deal with the landlord. You always have to worry about the man coming around. And maybe it's for good reasons to do the, you know, the spraying for the pests and whatnot, but you know, they're pests, they're pests coming around and they always say they're going to call first and they never do. And you know, you're in the middle of something, you know what I'm saying? Even the best landlord in the world is still a landlord. Anyway, all that rent money, 10, 15 years of rent money. You know, paying rent is just like flushing money down the toilet. I mean, you're not getting to keep it and just flushing it down the toilet, man. Could have been my money. But I gave it to somebody else so that I could live in the house that they own. Well, I'm tired of investing in other people's property. Hey man, that camera's off, right? Come on, let's get it! God damn it, Bart! And when something gets broken around here, it's a dilemma. Do you fix it? Or do you just wait and hope that maybe the landlord will fix it? Because after all, it's not my door. 
So we've decided to go ahead and take the next step, which is to buy a home, uh, our first home, a home of our own. But first, you have to find a home. And so we began the house hunting process. I think this one might be out of our price range. Structural problems. Now this is what you call a real fixer-upper, a veritable shell of a home. We almost bought this house, but uh, upon further inspection, it looked as if it was going to become a money pit perhaps $40,000, $50,000 worth of repairs that were needed, structural, electrical, plumbing. So um, we opted to back out at the last minute. As you can see, we're working on my dream home right now in Triadon Plaza. So finally we found this place. And we like it a lot. And so we made an offer and they accepted it. And so now we're trying to get the financing together. Hopefully we'll be back soon you know, for the final walkthrough. But I gotta say that I've, I've got some misgivings about this whole enterprise. I mean, uh, sure, it's a huge financial commitment, but more than that, I've got, I've got philosophical misgivings because property is theft, right? We'll get back to that. It's like we'll get back to this house, hopefully, uh, in a little bit. But in the meantime, let's check back into Montana and see how Jay is doing with his property. This is true home improvement. Well, it's late at night, and uh, I've had a couple of drinks, and uh, I think I'm committed. Now you got a fence around in your house. It looks less like a home and more like a prison. Motion detectors and security lights. What the fuck gets you the right touch? This land is long. I've got this uh, hummingbird feeder. <sighs> I've got a hummingbird feeder and, uh, and this hummingbird, it kind of hangs out by it and keeps the other hummingbirds from actually, you know, getting any food from the feeder. It acts like it owns the thing and that it can control who or what um, can come to the feeder and get nectar. You know, birds and, and other animals have territories where they exercise control over things, where they, where they try to keep others of their species and sometimes other species out of the area completely. And I think that's the fundamental almost instinct for property. This, um, Having a territory that's your own, guarding it, and, and that possibly the human acquisition of property and use of property as a motivation is really um, hardwired in our psyche. It's hardwired in, uh, what? It's hardwired in our genes. So it's problems like these that uh, make this process seem like it just lasts forever. As you can see up here, I'll uh, show you what I'm talking about. You see how I um, have all this stuff set, you know, I've been putting my underlayment for the tile here, and and then I get up here and, the, oh, 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 uh, yeah, there's this problem up here, you know, and I figured out what to do with that, In you know, in this case I'm going to um, put some mud in there and, and fill it in above there and nobody will be the wiser. But these things take time. And that's why it's like a week later since the last time you saw this place. And I still haven't really gotten shit done. We got the glass block window in. Um, and uh, I'm getting some of the cement board in here. You can see that. That's the stuff that goes under the tile. 
but it's taken a fuck of a long time. And, you know, these things cause marital problems sometimes, you know, and, you know, the guy's not uh, getting his shit done. And these things cause um, stress in your life. I never, I haven't taken a shower in days. And uh, they also just kind of suck. But the good news is, eventually the house is going to be done. And in the meantime, check this out. Property. Our vocabulary word for this episode is property. What is property? Property is theft. Now, when we say that property is theft, we're not talking about individual possession. To own your own land, the land that you live on, that's a good thing. In fact, it, it's necessary for individual liberty. Now, when we say that property is theft, we're talking about this whole system where the earth is is parceled off and owned by relatively few people, and the rest of us have to pay rent just to live. It's unfair, it's unjust, it's just another way to keep people down. It's robbery. And what gives anybody the right to own property that they don't even live on? We didn't make the land, it was already here. And you need land to survive, just like air and water. And even though the world is getting more and more crowded every day, there's still enough air and water and land to go around. But instead, we've got this system where land is subjugated to this abstract concept of property and ownership. It's like money or stocks and bonds that can be bought and sold and traded by people who may have no connection to the land that they're buying and selling and trading, except that they want to make a profit off of it. And as a consequence, you can't even live on this earth without either paying rent and investing in somebody else's property or buying your own home and becoming complicit in the whole rotten system. We are at our new address, Palatial Estate, over here in beautiful downtown New Orleans. At an undisclosed location. Mere minutes, I mean mere moments, mere seconds from Canal Street and mere hours before Hurricane Isidore. So basically, there's a moratorium on home insurance. Ain't no insurance company gonna pay out when a hurricane is coming which it is coming in. And Hurricane Isidore is going to make landfall in about 36 hours. So will we be here or will we be on the road running away? Don't know. Anyway, we, we are doing the final walkthrough, but we haven't signed the papers because the man won't actually release our money. Held up by the man. Once again. It's be the first time. Now, one thing, I was feeling the pressure of uh, starting a new job and we're, we're moving right in the middle of it. And I'm, I have no time because my job is very demanding. And oh my God, we gotta move. But now, oh my God, excuse me, stop with the ice cream, man. Okay, there's a hurricane coming in the ice cream. Man. The, the devil's okay. not stopped the ice cream, man. Sure. I'm on camera. All right. Oh, yeah. Y'all just jealous that y'all ain't on camera. <laughs>
So is her, this hurricane ain't going to slow you down? Ain't going to slow me down at all, sir. I'm going to roll in this hurricane. <laughs> some people are afraid of urban living and i say poo poo to them because let me tell you what i just went down i heard the ice cream man i know you did too and i ran down there in excitement i left my keys in my wallet here and alas, they are still here. Alas? Alas. This is a wonderful Hooray. neighborhood. Yeah, I mean, oh, hooray. Alas. Oh, not alas. Hooray, they're still here. So that means it's an awesome neighborhood. My yeah. neighbors were yeah, out. Your ice cream That's right. We got neighbors looking out for each other. Now you got a fence around and your house. It looks less like a home and more like a fence. See, this is an important uh, tip, actually, is um, leave, leave important shit to the professionals. And he's a professional. I'm a professional. Yeah. Um, I'm not as signified by the fact that I trip over everything. Let's see, I think, yeah, it's Need to be right. organized in the bottom of that. Exactly, yeah. You know, because keeping a, a clean and organized workspace is, is what it's all about. All right, yeah, it's in there, in the plumbing tools bag. Right. So you know how to solder all this stuff together? You could probably, like, make bongs, couldn't you? I suppose you could. Theoretically, of course. <laughs> if I knew what one was for. Uh-huh. So we're basically putting some toxic shit in there so that when we shower it... Well, it can't be too toxic. Lighting the fire. Let's see, I guess I shouldn't be on this side. I wouldn't get too close to that. It's gooing out of there. It's a good sign. Oh yeah, here's, here's another important tip. Use fire whenever possible. Especially around yes. like studs and wood and stuff. And, you know, what are you if not a stud? <laughs> all the boards on the windows for them. I guess they're a hurricane coming. Yep, look at all that rain. Now that's not just any rain, by the way. That would be Tropical Storm Isidore rain. It was a hurricane until it hit the Yucatan Peninsula. We lost strength over land as hurricanes do. Now it's a tropical storm and we were worried. It's headed straight for New Orleans, so we were worried it was going to become a hurricane again as it built strength over water. But it looks like that's not going to happen. It's just a tropical storm. Landfall expected in the wee hours of tomorrow morning. And here in the afternoon, the day before, we're already seeing the effects. Thank 
how high the water came. Uh-huh. So um, it's about half rum yeah. and half mix. Special sauce. I mean, on the one hand, I, I can tell that I'm getting drunk, yet I I don't have that that too much rum face. You mean you don't have that, you've got that love and feeling that you sometimes get, and then you get the mad feeling and you do things that oh, are inappropriate. Oh, oh. Well, needless to say, the uh, that storm really screwed things up not only for um, B and Christy but really for our schedule for producing this program seems to be just dragging on and and we're accumulating more and more stuff to put in it so um, you're just gonna have to tune in again next week to um, property is theft part two that's right we're gonna have to split this in two this this theme that we're working on because there's just so much to talk about well there's of course the completion of my bathroom which uh, I'm sure that you're just dying to know what happens next. There's also B and Christy signing their life away, um, which was a, which is, oh my god, there's a hole in the ground right there. Um, it's a good thing I didn't twist an ankle. I'd have to sue the property owner. Oh wait, that's me. Anyway, um, we'll have, uh, we'll have Eric breaking and entering, which is some footage. I haven't even seen this stuff, so I don't even know what it's about yet. Um, fortunately, I, you know, have have my notes that uh, B has provided me with. You'll get to see T. Bill burning some MP3s and uh, uh, in reckless violation of certain laws. Um, you'll get to see what else will you get to see? The oh, the exclusive interview with the tree that owns itself. Now this is some highly. Uh, actually, I haven't seen it, so I can't tell you anything about it. But it might be interesting, so check it out. And uh, we'll bye. also have a video bye, bye. poem by Paul my, Smedberg, my, my, who's a my, my, frequent my. contributor to this program, my. and uh, a freak. There will also be a lot of other stuff in that episode, so um, you're just going to have to tune in and check it out. So, thanks a lot for watching, and we'll see you next week.